So let's talk about all the sleep maxing hacks you've seen on social media. Our science reporter, Donna Lou, looked into it. So rapid fire, here's what's real and what's a dream. First, sleep positions. Now there's lots of people who will tell you that one specific way of sleeping is better than the others, usually sleeping on your back. Now the scientific evidence is super mixed on this. Like if you're heavily pregnant, side sleeping is safest. Side and stomach sleeping might be best for snoring. And in terms of aesthetics, sleeping on your back may lead to less wrinkling on your face. Ultimately, the bottom line is that the position that's most comfortable for you is probably the one that's going to lead to the best quality of sleep. Now, what are, what, sorry. Sorry. Now, what about mouth taping? Well, look, there is some research that breathing through your nose does have some benefits, but there is next to no research on if physically taping your mouth shut really makes any difference. And particularly for people with sleep apnea, taping your mouth has the potential to make airway obstruction worse. Next, what about all those wearable devices that estimate your sleep time and sleep quality? Well, the accuracy of these are improving over time, but still it varies a lot from device to device. And generally they aren't that good at distinguishing wishing if you've been in light or deep sleep. The other thing to consider is that fixating too much on getting the ideal sleep score can actually lead to some people getting sleep related anxiety, which makes things way worse. Sleep researchers have even coined a term for this, orthosomnia. So what sleep tips do we have evidence for? Well, it's great to get exposure to bright natural light first thing in the morning, as well as reducing exposure to any bright light at night, which unfortunately does mean less screen time before bed, even if you're wearing those fancy yellow tinted glasses or put your iPhone on night shift mode. Keeping a consistent bedtime and wake up time, even on the weekends is also great, unfortunately, as well as creating a calming pre-bedtime routine. You should limit afternoon naps to a maximum of 30 minutes, reduce caffeine intake in the afternoon, and also don't eat a heavy meal right before going to bed. And finally, you should avoid bed rotting or spending a bunch of time in bed when you don't actually intend on going to sleep. Oh, but ultimately the best way to tell if you've had a high quality night's sleep is just, did you wake up feeling well rested? If you did, you're probably already pretty sleep maxed.